Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the Stony River channel. Today is kind of a change of pace as far as content, I guess. Uh, I want to talk about vehicles with respect to emergency preparedness and specifically focus on winter conditions. So where I live, it's extremely cold in the winter, snowy. Uh, oftentimes I'm traveling in an area that might not have cell phone service or might not be even remotely close to a gas station or any kind of a business. So there are a few precautions that I've, I guess, no, I shouldn't say precautions. There are a few items that I prepare with. So there are some items that I always carry in a vehicle for emergency preparedness situations. And I think some of those are pretty obvious and they will be obvious where you'd have them all year round. And there are certain few additions I make in the winter time or adjustments or additions I make in the winter time uh, to account for the climate. And I wanna kinda of go through the whole vehicle as far as preparedness, uh, but I think this video, I'm just gonna focus on what's, on, what's in the trunk, um, or what I store in the trunk. Now, we're working with a small car here. This is a Toyota Echo, one of the most ridiculous vehicles ever, um, but incredibly fuel efficient, kinda of like a big golf cart, or just a golf cart, maybe. <laughs> it's very, very small. Uh, this one's an automatic and it's a coupe so it's got two doors and it's just really small um, and there are a lot of features that other cars have like power steering um, cruise control that this vehicle simply does not have it's kind of a ridiculous car so the trunk's super small and it gets kind of full in the winter um, of course if i was hauling things in town i might adjust differently but i actually want to emphasize that this is for like if you're traveling a significant distance not just driving around an urban area you wouldn't need all these items some of them you definitely would but not all of them um, so let's let's dive into the trunk and see what I have for emergency preparedness driving a small car in the winter in the middle of nowhere. So here we're looking in the trunk here and the first thing you see is a spare tire. Now the spare tire is normally not uh, located just in the trunk, it's kind of stowed underneath. I'm going to put it back there but the reason I wanted to highlight the spare tire is that uh, I think people oftentimes do not check the tire pressure on their spare tire and over time it will lose uh, it'll lose air. So it's, I think it's really important to periodically check the pressure on your spare tire because what's the point of putting a spare tire on if it also is incredibly low or flat? So I checked mine today and it was about 20 PSI below what it should be and I haven't checked it for um, six months to a year. And I, I'll actually admit one of my the most embarrassing moments with this vehicle is that I got this vehicle and I drove it for like a year without ever even like inspecting where the spare tire was located or where, whether or not it even had a jack. And in fact, it didn't have a scissor jack. So I bought one, um, but it was just really stupid of me to not verify that immediately. I've learned a lot over the years, so I, I admit my mistakes and faults, but like, yeah, just if you own a vehicle, check your spare, make sure you have a jack, make sure you know how to work the jack, make sure that you uh, know the positions where you jack your car up and, um, this might be common sense to most people, but when, you know, say you get a flat, when you're removing the lug nuts, you want to uh, remove them before you jack it up because the pressure of the vehicle on the tire gets you a little bit better leverage when you're removing those lug nuts. And in my climate, they're oftentimes very rusty. I'll talk a little bit, there's one more little tip I want to offer for removing rusty lug nuts, uh, and I'll talk about that. So, yeah, you see a few items. I'm going to take the tire out and um, then we'll go through the other items that are present. So this isn't packaged in a very particular way or organized, which I could work on, but basically what I carry is I carry a large sleeping bag. Um, and this sleeping bag in particular is a down bag that's rated for really uh, cold temperatures. It's either like a zero degree bag, I think, or maybe a 15 degree bag. I think it's a zero degree bag. And it's in a cotton like laundry bag because with these down bags, you don't typically want to store them for long periods compressed. Uh, just kind of reduces the loft of the bag. So, I mean, of course, if I wanted to put more stuff in the trunk, I can compress this down to, you know, the size of, like, a Nalgene water bottle. But since I don't need that added storage space, and I'm just going to keep it in there for the time being. I keep it in this, like, cotton laundry bag. And the cotton breathes, so it prevents any moisture from accumulating inside of there. Um, so, yeah, so that's a down sleeping bag. And I think that the, reason, the, the utility of that it should be pretty obvious, right? If your car breaks down and it's freezing cold, whether you stay in your car or flee your car, you have a sleeping bag to crawl in. 
that's rated for a really low temperature that would keep you alive or keep you comfortable or whatever. So that's that's one item. Once again, you can compress it and store it much smaller, but since I'm just leaving it in here for the winter and not using my trunk for much, I just leave it uh, uncompressed so it retains that loft. That's a sleeping bag. Um, I have a regular tarp, just one of those cheap blue tarps. It's pretty big. I'm not sure the dimensions on this one. It's a pretty big one. Um, I'm probably going to swap this out for something smaller, but I think the idea of how a tarp could be useful are pretty self-explanatory. You could make a shelter, protect yourself from the weather. Um, I mean, there's, yeah, I'm not going to go into that, but there's so many uses for a tarp. I think that's pretty obvious. This one's a little bulky and cheap. I might put a more fancy one in here and swap that out. Okay, then I have a Thermarest Z-Rest foam closed cell foam sleeping pad probably not a hundred percent necessary but I feel like if you had to change a tire or do any kind of mechanical work on the fly it's nice to have a foam pad to kneel on or sit on or lay on or whatever and then in the event that you did have to flee your car um, and you're using that sleeping bag and it's winter time it'd be nice to lay the sleeping bag on top of something right um, so you say you flee into the woods and make a fire you can set your sleeping pad down put the sleeping bag on top of it and you'll be a little bit insulated from the ground there. So it's a little bit multi-purpose, maybe not 100% necessary, but the Z-Rest takes up very little space, that accordion-style folding pattern. So that's just uh, something I'm gonna keep in there this winter. And I have oil, um, just whatever, 5W30 oil. Uh, that's pretty intuitive why you'd have that. Uh, I have a jug of water. Now, this is in an old, windshield washer fluid bottle and that's not something you'd want to probably drink out of uh, but you can use water for you know rinsing things off it, it'd probably make more sense to have a have potable water for drinking and cooking and rinsing and whatever but in the winter it's going to freeze anyway so water is not is useful normally i would have a full can of wiper fluid as well and as far as other like automotive fluids uh i've considered coolant um carrying coolant but i just really have never needed it and uh, yeah, so that might be one other thing. And of course you could carry a, a small gas can too, just in case you run out of gas, but typically this thing is so fuel efficient and I, I'm pretty smart about leaving with a full tank on trips. So a, a gas can would, wouldn't be a bad idea, but it smells and also uh, I just have such limited space in this tiny car. So then moving on, I have this black tote, which contains a bunch of stuff and I'm gonna pull the tote out and we'll examine the contents of that tote. All right, let's go through some of the contents in this large black tote. Um, they're not really organized super well. Would like to work on that and improve it. So not saying I have the system down by any means. I'm still still work in progress, trying to make changes, make modifications, adjustments as time goes by and you learn more. So um, a shovel, pretty important in snow country. If you get stuck in the snow, this is like a lightweight camping shovel for winter camping, but. Um, might want to do something bigger, but it would probably get the job done for my little car if I needed to, so shovel. This is another style of shovel. It's called a snow claw, where you can just kind of use this and, um, or actually I guess it would be like this. You can scrape, you can shovel, you can move things. It's like just a piece of plastic that has handles, but it's really lightweight and cool. So take this winter camping usually too, but throw it in the back for when I'm not doing that weighs almost nothing so whatever um reusable shopping bag that's not really a winter preparedness thing although you could carry brush and twigs or something for fire materials if you needed to but uh we, you know we have a plastic bag tax where i live so and if you go to aldi if you guys know aldi um they're not sponsoring me or anything but if you go to aldi um you know that they don't provide bags so you have to bring your own bag so that's just a whatever um jumper cables i think everyone knows what those are for I've considered getting one of those portable battery jumping ba battery banks or whatever they're called. Um, I haven't pulled the trigger on that yet, uh, but you know, when you're in really cold climates and your battery's dead, you're not going anywhere. If you don't have cell phone service, you're not near anyone that you know to jump you, um, you're stranded. So I think that that's something I'm looking to investing. And if you guys know of any cool battery jumping battery bank things um, that you highly recommend or have been tested well by you that have been gone through the rigors of testing let me know because I might buy one um, a funnel 
I keep this funnel in a plastic bag just to keep the other contents from smelling like oil, but I should have a funnel. Sorry about the wind noise, I apologize. Um, here's another reusable shopping bag that just has a bunch of different pairs of gloves. Uh, work gloves, winter gloves. Probably should throw a hat in there, some extra socks. That's not in there right now, but that would be a good addition. Uh, there's a gear tie that you can use for whatever. There's a small piece of cordage. Um, I usually keep other cordage elsewhere in my car, but uh, this kind of nylon cordage is nice. I should have more of that in here. I would also probably normally have ratchet straps, but I'm not, I don't envision hauling anything on this tiny car in the winter. Sometimes I put, oh, not sometimes, many times I put a canoe on there, so I would have ratchet straps for that, but I just can't see a use for that right now. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, just some Ziploc bags. I do a bunch of uh, botanizing and seed collecting and plant collectings. But I guess you could use these for, or these are these are used, but you can reuse them for a lot of sort, a lot of different applications. Sponge, I don't really know. I guess this is probably unnecessary. I think it's really used to clean out boats and stuff. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's a sponge. Uh, let's see. We got uh, some um, socket set. So it's a little socket set. Just a cheap one, nothing fancy. This is a uh, Menards brand, but I don't have a lot of other tools. I've thought about expanding the tools I might want to carry, um, but I'm uh, sorry about the wind. I haven't really done that. Uh, I have a single screwdriver too, but I should probably have like a small screwdriver set and like a hammer or something. I think that would be smart to get a little mini car toolkit. Just so far, I just have the the one screwdriver and the socket set, and then I'm a botanist, so trowel. I guess if you had to poop in the woods, emergency situation, you could use this to dig a hole. But I use this usually to dig up plants, so keep a trowel. I guess probably not necessary in the winter, but whatever. And then. I have a little cook kit here. This is a mini, this is a titanium uh, cup slash pot that has a little stove in it with a pro, uh, isopropyl fuel c cylinder. So this whole this whole thing, I've featured a whole video on it. Um, I'll try to link it below, but this is my emergency cook kit. And I think why it's important, not only for cooking in the winter, but water. So like, you can bring water with you in your car, but it's going to freeze. But if you have a way to melt snow, um, that can keep you hydrated. So. I did this whole kit in a whole other video, so I'm not really going to go through it, but it's a it's a titanium cup slash pot with a stove and a fuel cylinder all in this little thing. It weighs nothing, so um, pretty cool little mini cook setup that you could use to cook or melt snow for water to stay hydrated. And then I have a couple mountain houses. This is just uh, freeze-dried food that all it needs is boiling water, so I could use that cook stove to boil some water, whether it's water I brought or snow. And I could eat, and this would keep me going for several days. So I don't eat that much, so two mountain houses would keep me going. Um, and then the last things in here really are the jack. This is an aftermarket jack. It didn't come with the car because I said it was missing, as I mentioned earlier. When I um, so this is just Northern Tool and Equipment's brand or whatever um, scissor jack, pretty standard. Uh, and I have a random like 10 inch nail. I don't know. This is usually used as stakes for winter camping. I think it just kind of fell out, but I guess there's a use for it. And then when I was talking about the lug nuts and when you're changing a flat tire, sometimes they're so rusty that you don't get enough leverage with the, with the lug wrench, which I have in the car. I didn't show that, but that's underneath where the wheel is stored. But getting like a piece of threaded metal piping like this from any home improvement store, you can, it's, uh, hollow, right? So you can you, you can add that, and it gives you more leverage because you ex extend the length of the handle on the the lug wrench. So this can be clutch. So um, that's a definitely recommend getting something like that. It's really hard to, sometimes to get rusty parts off of cars. So that's everything in the tote. I'm gonna put it all back, and we'll wrap it up. So that's part one of my emergency preparedness series of videos. Uh, just focusing on what's in the trunk. There are a few other items I kind of mentioned throughout the video that I might be interested in kind of improving this setup. More tools, perhaps more automotive fluids, perhaps one of those battery chargers, perhaps one of those portable kind of air compressors to inflate your tire. Um, but I'm sure that there are other things you're probably thinking of like, you know, cordage, 
fire starting materials, snow scraper, um, headlamp, uh, all that stuff I would have in the, uh, the uh, actual car itself and I wouldn't keep in the trunk. And, but that's my winter setup in the trunk. I'll talk about what I keep uh, inside the car in a different video, but I do account for all of those kind of obvious things, fire starting, cordage, um, a lot of other stuff. So that I keep usually in, a, in between the backpack and the glove box. But once again, we're working with the tiny car, so it's kind of a good thought experiment for how you can be efficient with your space, but still be super prepared. So thank you everyone for watching this video. Please give me your suggestions, comments about how you prepare your vehicle for emergency situations, winter, summer, spring, or fall. So I appreciate all of you watching. Um, if you feel like you like this kind of stuff and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Think about making a comment or liking. And I'll keep putting out an assortment of videos on outdoor gear, wilderness locations, and uh, emergency preparedness. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.